What to do with $150,000 in saving? I'm a 29 year old male from Perth. I have $150,000 in a savings account, generating me 5.5% per annum. I don't own any property, and I am skeptical about entering the market in Perth at the moment. Wondering what to do with it to generate decent ROI with low risk. What I would do with $150,000 today if I didn't have any investments. High ROI, low risk. Those two things, unfortunately, don't go hand in hand. Highest returns on investment mean the highest risks. Right now, with $150,000 sitting in a savings account generating 5.5% per annum, a guaranteed 5.5% return, zero risk. Low risk, lowish reward. 5.5% may seem like a good return, but inflation is happening at, say, 3 to 4% per annum. Net return, 1 to 1.5%, which is very very low. As you start to move up the chain, residential real estate, my investment of choice to grow my wealth, it is also relatively low risk in my opinion. With 150 grand, you probably would get a five and a half to say seven and a half percent return over a long period of time. Well, why would I do that if it's similar to what I can get for essentially no risk in a savings account? You take on leverage, go to the bank and borrow five, six, seven hundred thousand of their money, combine the two together and go buy something for eight hundred thousand dollars. And let's assume that it's an investment property and because you're putting in cash and you might borrow, say, the other 80%, the rental income is about even with your cost, which means it shouldn't be costing you a lot of money to own that property. Now you're getting growth, not on your $150,000, but you're getting growth on your six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars property. And if it's only the same growth that you were getting in your interest account, instead of making $7,000 to $8,000 a year on your one you you're now making the 5.5% on $800,000. And that's the power of leverage, because now you're getting the same amount of growth, but you're getting it on a much larger asset base. And then when you look at, well, how much did I actually put into that investment? And if you did buy something at 800 and you're getting five and a half percent, which would be about 40 odd thousand dollars of capital growth on that property year in, year out, you're now getting a $40,000 return on a $150,000 investment, which is essentially a 25 to 30% gross return on your investment year on year. In three or four years, you've essentially made a hundred percent on your initial capital, borrow against that property. So you go back to the bank, gone up in value, refinance that property and release $150,000 of capital, you can then take your money out of the deal, which essentially means you have increased your debt level, but you now have none of your own capital in the deal and you're rolling with the bank's money, 100% of the bank's money as a uh, punters like to call it, you're using house money. The ROI then becomes unlimited. And that really is the power of property, not really needing to use any of your own earned income and then getting a return on that money. The difference between the cost and what you make becomes incredible over time. And it's made more and more millionaires in Australia than any other asset class. It shows you the type of investment it is.